Hopefully. Okay. Good morning, you guys. Welcome to Morning Mindset. Um, I am super excited. It's Friday. <clears throat> I am I have a really weird week because I, I got back from vacation on yesterday. So like it's like I'm trying to roll with the punches. <laughs> like I feel extremely well rested, right? But I, I got off my like my sleeping pattern. Um, I've been waking up like kind of whenever I press the snooze button, y'all, this morning. And y'all know how I talk so against the snooze button. But I pressed the snooze button as if like that extra 12 minutes was going to just give me life. But um, I jumped out of bed. I got myself ready. And we are here on this Friday morning um, on our mindset talk. And um, I know we are all adjusting to our new time. Uh, we are now meeting at 7 a.m. So for those that still desire to join us, it's going to challenge you a little bit to wake up a little bit earlier, but I definitely encourage you to do so. And if you are watching the replay and you're like, dang, I missed the live one. It's OK. Join us again on Monday. But um, but yeah, I had to make the time adjustment for the sanctity of my day. Um, because when we start at eight, I end at nine and I'm like, oh my God, that's like way, 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 way too late. Initially, if you guys remember, for those that's been with me in the beginning, we were starting at 6 a.m., right? Waking up. I mean, I wake up early already, but y'all was like, yo, Jazz, I love your girl, but <laughs> I can't do 6 a.m. <laughs> like I'm grown in stages on this thing. Okay. So I get it. But um, you know me, I'm going to roll with it. And when people join, I'm going to be uh, excited to see those faces on here when you guys join me. But um, let's get into it, okay? So one thing in the academy um, right now in the membership, we had our book club, okay? And um, I'm going to be super honest. I kind of fell off of the book club, you guys. I'm human. That happens. But I did, right? Um, we started our challenge on last month, and I just got really focused on that. And the book club kind of slipped to the wayside, okay? But I'm picking it back up um, because I understand how important it is to the community, to entrepreneurs everywhere, okay? Um, this is the whole reason why I like to do these um, morning mindset talks on every Monday, uh, Wednesday, and Friday. And um, I was, it was so funny. I was even contemplating, like, okay, do I need a you know, maybe I should only do two days of this, right? Because sometimes your girl be tired. But um, <laughs> God was like, nah, -uh, don't do it. Don't do it. Because I was really about to give into this flesh and be like, yo, sometimes your girl be tired. Okay. But, um, but I, I, I really enjoy doing this. I understand the importance of these. So I'm going to stick with it. Good morning, Shakira. I'm super excited that you're joining us this morning. Um, but I wanted to talk a little bit about the beginning, uh, about this book that we're reading, okay? Um, Shakira, I know we talked about this on last night as well, so you get a little double dose, um, but we're reading this book called Think and Grow Rich, right? And um, in the group last night, I asked everybody if they are currently reading this book or heard of this book. Majority of them said they've heard of this book because it's a classic. I mean, I don't, I don't even know when it was written, but it's a classic, okay? It was written by Napoleon Hill, um, and it's a great read. And I mean, he has like this whole fortress of books. And when I mean he, I mean Napoleon Hill. I mean, on so many different books about um, wealth building, wealth strategy, businesses, uh, you know, business, business strategies and different principles. I mean, I think I've read maybe shoot, six, six or seven of his books that he wrote. And I have like several, several more in my Audible library, but they are so, so good, y'all. Oh my goodness. Some of them are like smaller, easier, digestible reads. And some of them, I like think, Grow Rich, they're a little bit longer, right? Um, I think Think Grow Rich has Ugh, don't get me lying. It has some chapters. Okay. Um, but like I said, um, depending on your lifestyle, right. Um, we all have these goals and these dreams, right. But I'm always saying to set like tangible goals, right. If you're somebody that's super, super busy and you really don't see a time in your day to where you can really like pause life and sit down and read a book, 
you know, that's, that has always been my thing. In my mind, I'm like, oh, I want to be able just to find a nice, cozy, silent corner. See, that was mistake number one, okay? To think that I could have a moment of silence in this household with, you know, all of my kids running around, um, Miss Pearl needing all of all of my attention, right? It was literally like mistake number one, okay? And so I'm like, I want to find a nice cozy corner to sit in and to read my book and just, you know, just have a, a good old moment, right? Um, and I, I, I tried to do this two, two ways. I tried to do it first thing in the morning. Um, I think I may read, I've, I've had the best luck with doing it that way, right? First thing in the morning or like late at night, I'm like, oh, before I go, you guys see the movies, like older couples in the movies, they're like sitting on the bed and they're like each reading a book and then they, you know, turn over, kiss each other and then turn the lights on, go to bed. So I'm like, oh, I want that in the movies. But even that in my household right now, super unrealistic, okay? Um, I have Jace Avery that tries to hop in our bed every chance he gets, right? He's still in that, that toddler phase. Um, and it's just, it's just not realistic. So if you guys have a desire like to read um, and really grow your mindset, I'm telling you guys that will be able to help you grow so significantly. Um, pick something that's best suitable for your lifestyle. If you maybe can't sit down and read, then listen to Audible, okay? I love Audible. I listen to it all the time. I get books so I get so many books read, right? And somebody was like, "Oh my God, how do you read so many books like all year?" Because I had this book goal number. I'm like, like, how do you have time to do that? I'm like, I listen to them. Like, they're like, "What? That's not the same thing." Uh, look here. To me, it is okay. <laughs> I'm digesting the information. I'm taking in the information. I'm learning it. If I if I miss something, then I can rewind it. Okay. There's some books that I have a physical copy to if I want to like underline things and like take notes on things. But most of them bad boys are on Audible. Okay, monthly subscription, and I just listen to them. <laughs> so check that out as well. Um, and the best part about this book for those that are members the free pdf version is in the membership like you could totally go get a free pdf version if you want to print it or if you're like me and you need it to listen to audible while you're multitasking and doing other things then check it out on youtube like you can literally just listen to each chapter on youtube it's totally free okay so next week um we're going to be getting back into our um, book club meetings, and I'm super excited about that. But I wanted to go over like some of the first couple chapters um, with the group last night. And then I really wanted to talk about this one specific thing on um, like one of my favorite points, like that's in the first three chapters of the book. I think I'm, I have like lightly discussed it, but this is like some of my first, like one of my favorite points that it talks about in the book. Um, I think this is in chapter two or chapter three. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, I'm not 100% sure, right? But uh, <laughs> when you read the book, you'll know it. Like when you see it, you'll know it, right? But in either one of those chapters, it talks about um, how to turn your desires into reality, right? And um, I really love the way they broke these steps down. Um, and then, of course, you know, I added my own verbiage and understanding because um, it goes a little bit deeper for me than what I see that they talk about a list in the book, right? Um, I know that I, so I'm going to go through these six steps, okay, you guys? And step number one, um, step number one has always been like one of the things that I try to super, super, super drill in, Um super drill into everybody, right? The importance of really truly understanding um, and knowing the desires, like your desire, right? Like what does your success look like? You know, over the week, um, my husband and I celebrated 14 years, which is amazing. Um, it's so funny because like literally every place we went to and there, you know, we went out of town, they're like, oh, what are you doing here? We told them like, oh my God, I've never met anybody that's been married this long. Now, these are like younger-ish, older, younger-ish people, but it was really a celebration to be able to say that we made it this long and like, we're happy and we don't want to go nowhere. And like, I'm okay with, you know, all the 
things, <laughs> right? But um, we had like a little, we had a meeting while we were there as well. And we wanted to re-advise um, or revisit some of our goals, right? Because I was, we were talking, I was like, you know, I don't really don't remember some of the things that we talked about. I know we talked about a lot of our desires and goals and what we want life to look like when, you know, we get married and have kids, right? But I mean, that was 14 years ago. I was 22, you know what I mean? Like still young, love and dumb, right? <laughs> Just be like, oh, life is going to be all cotton candy and rose petals every day, right? And um, so I really had to like, we really wanted to revisit those and like rewrite those. And I was saying like, that's amazing part of life. Like we could, anybody could wake up one morning or in the middle of the day, like whenever and be like, you know, I want to rewrite my reality. I want, I, I, I want to change the path that I'm going on. I, I have these dreams. My goals have evolved. I have evolved as a person. I have matured in my thought process. Um, I have created a better work ethic, right? Like I'm more focused in life and we all will reach those moments, right? We will all reach those moments in our life to where we're now, you know, really like dialed in, right? We're like not we're, we're done with the shenanigans <laughs> we're done with like the the distractions of life and some of us may get frustrated because we, we're not seeing ourselves in the place where we thought we should see ourselves at the age or time frame that we should be in right like no matter what situation you are in in life and if you're happy or unhappy and you want to make some changes you can decide to do that right and I know sometimes people may get frustrated by, oh, I don't have the choice. This is my life. I'm just playing the cards I'm dealt with. Look here, baby, you can toss some cards back in and pull out a new deck, okay? Like you do have the choice. And the most people that will say that type of statement, they are frustrated of life. They are not happy. They are the ones that are trying to escape and just don't know way how. And hearing the word, you have the choice in their mind. It's like, yo, you just make it sound so simple. And I know life is hard. And I know trying to find that way to make the choice in your mind may seem unimaginable, unimaginable, but you do. How your choices, the choices you make affect your everyday life, right? We, we know that, right? But your path may look different because you may have other obligations, right? Um, I have a house guest staying with us, a friend from out of state, and she's young and she's trying to figure out life. And I'm like, yo, you have such an advantage right now because you have no, um, nobody that's depending on you, nobody that, you, that you're held accountable for. Like you can make choices solely based upon what makes you happy, what you want to do in life, right? Some other people don't have those um, liberations to be able to do that. So yes, you can today, tomorrow, or any other day decide to change 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 the trajectory of your life like rewrite your story like what it is so we had we had a meeting like that right so I'm like honey you know when we talked about this 14 years ago we had no idea that life would look like this for us we had no idea that I would be an entrepreneur like what so I thought I was going to just climb the corporate ladder and be some top boss right um I had no idea that we would be in Texas I mean, I was a Cali girl through and through. So I just knew that I would be staying and living in California, right? So there's things in life that I would have never thought of. So like, let's, let's really talk these things through. We have matured, we have um, evolved, right? Our goals and dreams and desires have all like, let's rewrite this part right now. Um, and having that meeting was amazing because it gave us clarity, right? It gave us a good clarity and understanding on what are we working on? What are we focusing on for the next couple of years in our life? And what, what kind of outcome we want to have in the next couple of, you know, next couple of years, right? So defining your desires is critical, right? It's literally the first step that you can make that will define and give you clarity, Okay, because you have to know what you're running after. You have to know what you're working so hard for. Because sometimes we will be working so hard, so hard, endlessly, 
so hard. And we'll have those moments where we're down and we're frustrated and we're overwhelmed and we're overworked. And if we lose sight of what we're working for, then we might quit. We might give up. We might throw in the towel too soon because we don't, or we forgot what we're working towards. So you have to do, you have to define that, define that level of success. What is your money goal? Like, what is the money goal that you're reaching towards every month? Like, what is that consistent number that you want to see? Like, know it literally all the way down to that, right? So it's super, super important for you guys to, to know what that is and then write it down. Write your desires down and make sure it's so clear, so concise, right? Like, write down your statement of what you're trying to reach for. Then the next thing is going to be to create a plan. OK, because we're talking about what we want to do. We're talking about what we want to see. And y'all know me like it'll just continue to stay a desire if I don't really write the plan down. Right. Because once you define the desires, you have to create the plan to achieve it, like break it down in um, in smaller desires. Right. Break it down in imaginable, manageable goals. Sorry, I don't know water. My mouth is tripping. <laughs> um, manageable goals. OK. And then create a timeline, okay? Create a timeline for achieving each of these steps, right? Consider the obstacles that's gonna come, right? This is why we're doing it because we're now more mature. We have evolved. We know that our desires and our goals that we're trying to reach and aim for is not going to come without any challenges. We would be blind, right? I would have been blind on the altar at 14 years ago, 14 years ago, to think that the moment I say I do is going to be just cocoa and, and, and you know, and, and rose petals every single day. <clears throat> I went in knowing that there will be challenges. Same thing with our goals. But sometimes we feel like, oh, now that I have clarity, I'm working on this thing. I know that I'm going to achieve this. And then we get upset when an obstacle come our way. <clears throat> We want to say, oh, this is not meant for me. Oh, this is not for me. I, I, I thought of it wrong. Oh, it's too big. Or I'm just, just going to quit. I'm a, I'll find something else easier. It don't matter what you try. It, it literally doesn't matter what you try. There will be some obstacles and some challenges that may arise that will come up. So if you can pre-plan for those obstacles, for those for those challenges, then you can kind of create some strategies to overcome them because we know they're going to happen, right? But this part is key because I can say those words and some people will feel one way about it. We'll be like, hey, man, why everything got to be hard? And then some people are going to be like, man, I appreciate that. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to need those challenges. Those challenges and, and those obstacles, those are the things that's going to stretch me, that's going to prepare me for the desire that I'm actually working for. Because within, without any challenge, without any stretch, will I be able to carry the weight of the desire that I'm actually trying to Do I have enough capacity to, to carry what it is that I'm dreaming for? I need those challenges. I welcome them. Now, they're not always smile welcomes, but I'd be like, all right, I see you. <laughs> okay, I'll take that. Let's come on, bring it on, right? Let me figure out a way to strategize and figure this thing out. And you guys, this is a this is a tool. So, oh my gosh, I was watching this show. I think it's called Outbreaker or whatever. It's on Netflix. And um, there's this kid, his name is JJ, right? And like, he like titled himself the problem solver. but or the, the solutioner or something like that. But it's funny because every time he comes up with a solution for the problem that has come up, it doesn't always like happens the way he thinks of it in his mind, or it doesn't always just pan out super smoothly. <laughs> like it'll like end them in up some more trouble or a kind of trouble, but he's able to think of another solution to get him out of that trouble. So ultimately like they're out of whatever challenge that has arise, right? And they're like, man, JJ, like your solutions always end up in more trouble. He's like, but we always get out of them. <laughs> and Ricky was laughing like, yo, that man is crazy. And I'm like, yo, that man is smart. He's young. So 
the the level of wisdom and experience he has is not as grand so his solutions kind of show that but just the mindset that he has and not even the mindset the mindset is one thing but the confidence that he has in himself, that he can create solutions to come out of the problem. I'm like, yo, that kid is going to, I know it's just a movie, right? It's, it's a fictional character, but I'm like, yo, that kid's going to be something like that kid is going to be dope because he's like, yo, any problem, I got the solution. And, and he's like, yo, I know my solution may not work out, but I know at the end of the day, I'm going to come out Scott clear. Right. So it's the mindset of how we look at these challenges, right? I'm not saying to like welcome them in and give them some roses. I'm like, like take on the challenge willingly, knowing that they're going to come and that you're going to overcome them. Okay. Um, the next thing is action, right? Sometimes I see pop up, you know, I look at all the comments and I, I always try to respond to every single comment that comes in on every platform because I'm like, if people are taking the time to write these comments or ask these questions, then I want to value their time and respond. So I love it when I can see people like from YouTube that will ask a question on, I saw this just this week, where they would ask a question on YouTube, make a comment, right? And then like within a couple of minutes or an hour or so, they're, they're like, doing a welcome post in the membership. Like, hey, you guys, my name is such and such. I just joined. I'm like, yo, I just responded to her comment. Like, I love action takers. I love it because those are the ones that will actually be able to reach their goals because it's not just enough to define it. It's not just enough to create the plan. I am a writer and I have a plan written for everything. But if I don't execute it and I don't take action, then it's it's literally just gonna be some post-it notes that will mean nothing. Post-it notes. Oh, here go another post-it note. Here go another. I mean, it'll just be these things that will mean essentially nothing if I don't put action to it. So once you have your plan written all down, into smaller, imaginable steps. Don't, don't set yourself up for failure. Set small, imaginable, manageable goals that you know that you can reach, okay? Um, that will give you that boost of a win, that will boost your confidence, right? And then take action on those. Start working toward those goals by taking small steps each day, okay? Like, don't just oh my God, I'm, I'm, I had this epiphany. I'm going to work on this. I'm going to just go for the gusto. You're going to burn out, right? But I, I love I love the energy and I love, love the excitement, but you might burn out, right? And I don't want you to burn out. So I don't want you to get overwhelmed and I don't want you to quit, okay? So take small steps every single day. Look, you know what the cheat code is? I get these calls often and I'm, and I'm having calls with, you know, entrepreneur that's trying to um build financial wealth right that 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 wants to see good like just i see these videos you make it sound so easy like what about what do i have to do like i'm doing the things but like how do i get there you know what the secret is consistency that that is the secret that that is that's the secret that's the cheat code if anybody wanted to know like what's the fastest way to get rich right <laughs> when I read Think and Grow Rich, I'm literally thinking that I'm going to get all the secrets and they're going to tell me and by the end of this book, I'm going to be a millionaire. But it didn't work like that, right? The, the only cheat code is to be consistent. I mean, consistent every single day. Work on something. Now, yes, if you have designated days where you cannot work, okay, I get that. But don't skip a day just because you need rest. Don't skip a day because you're tired. The consistency will build something in you that nothing else will be able to do. That is the cheat code because inevitably, if you stay consistent with the right activities, striving for the desires that you have, you will ultimately reach that with consistency. You can't be like, oh, one day I'm going to do this and, and then next week and I'm going to work on that. Oh, snap, I got distracted. And then next month, I'm going to work on that. I know life happens. And sometimes you drop the ball, but pick it back up and stay consistent. I saw this quote. Y'all know I'm a Cali girl, so I'm a Kobe fan, right? And there was this quote that Kobe 
um, that Kobe was reading and it was talking about consistency, right? Um, he was like, uh, he was talking about like youth sports, right? And it said that a kid that will practice maybe once a week or, or two hours, uh, two hours a week, you know, after school, um, yes, they will grow, right? But the kid that consistently works on their craft two to three hours every single day will out like leaps and bounds, like out, not outwork them, but outgrow them, outlearn them, right? What they will be able to achieve in their, in their craft that they're working on will like just by the consistent everyday work ethic. He didn't say like, yo, you got to like wake up and be Shaq or you have to have like, you have to be born with these, like these super amazing skills and you got to be Steph Curry at 10. No, they said, just, just working on your craft. Even if you don't see the growth at the time, even if you don't see and can't tell that you're going somewhere, that you're doing something different over time, every single day, you will out like completely outgrow that person that's just doing an hour here, two hours a week, right? Can you imagine that? Um, and that's something that, you know, they they preach at my son's soccer academy because he's literally there eight to 10 hours a day, every day. Um, and he does soccer every day, literally every day because he has games on Saturday and Sundays and he does not skip a beat. And sometimes when I look at him, Sometimes when I look at him, I don't see like the growth. I'd be like, man, he should be over that. Or man, he should be further than that. Or man, he should be, she, she should be doing that, right? So in the time of him working consistently, I may not be able to see it in present time, right? I may not be able to see it in present time, but I know by and by, I know over time, I will be able to see the growth, right? But sometimes as we're working on a thing, we want to see the growth now. We want to see, we want to see the outcome of those things now. And that may not work like that. We just, we can't see it right now, but it will pay off. So make sure you stay focused on the desires of your outcome and keep moving forward. Okay. Even when progress seems slow at times. Okay. My next one, uh, step four is monitor your progress. Self-awareness is like, a magical tool. <laughs> it really is. It's a tool that we people most regularly do because um, they don't want to maybe see the faults in themselves or see the downside of themselves, right? But sometimes we're not always looking at the negative. Like we want to look at the positive too, right? Celebrate the small wins, okay? But have good self awareness and monitor your progress. You'll be able to see. If your activities that you're doing is actually going to achieve the outcome, right? Is, is this a, sometimes I have to ask myself, is this a, um, a profitable action that I'm working on? Or is this just like a distraction? Is this just something to do just to have something to do, right? Monitor that so that way you can make those adjustments because any setbacks essentially are just opportunities to learn to adjust your plan. But you have to monitor it. You have to see, like, is this working? Am I doing this right? Should I do it this way? Let me get advice. Let me, you know, talk with my mentor to see, am I making the right progress with the activities that I'm doing? And maybe I need to adjust my activities, okay? Um, we're almost done. <laughs> I'm always up to, almost up to my time, but we're almost done, you guys. Um, the next one is staying motivated. Uh, it was so funny. I read this book. Or listen to this book. It was a um, it's a book about this kid. He's an athlete, and he it's it's a book that's literally about emotional intelligence. But I love the story they use to teach on this topic. Um, and this kid is a hockey player. He's you know going somewhere, going all stars. He gets drafted and goes into college. And like his first or second game that he got into, he got into an accident. He like rammed somebody in and fell onto the ice and he got paralyzed. And of course, you know, there's his whole hockey career. He, he prepared and planned his whole life to be able to do this one thing that he wasn't um, no longer able to do. 
Now, fortunately, God had a bigger plan for him and his new path that he was on, um, I mean, outdid anything that he thought he could do on the ice, right? But there was a part in this book, it talked about like motivation. Um, and it, that part was definitely for me because I, you know, I talk to my kids and I'm trying to motivate them like, Hey man, you know, like, you know, this is the last quarter of the, of the year. Like, let's go really hard on those grades. Right. Or Javelle, like, Hey, this is spring season. Next season is summer. Uh, you know, you have signing day during summer. Like let's like super focus. Right. <laughs> Jay Savory, hey, we're gonna be starting kindergarten soon. Like, let's like let's really practice writing your name so you can be prepared, right? And I can motivate them, but if it's an external motivation, it will die off. Okay, it will shortly just lose life. <laughs> motivation is something that has to come internal. Okay, and I'm not using the word encouraging or encourage. I'm not using the word inspire. I'm using motivation. Like the things that you do has to be self-motivated because you are the only one when nobody's looking that will actually get up and do the task that you have planned to do. If you're not self-motivated to do those things, then you won't. Okay. And the self-motivation will outride any feelings, outride any tiredness, outride any challenges that will come, right? That is what self-motivation is. And it's important that you stay motivated throughout the progress, throughout the process. Okay. You have to stay motivated. Um, use like visualization, remind yourself, read, read that desire statement, right? Uh, reward your progress. Um, seek support from friends. These are different ways than how it can help you stay motivated, but motivation has to be an internal thing. Because I can talk to my kids all day long and, and, and like, hey, you know, if you can do this, like, this is going to be super awesome. You'll be able to do this. Or, hey, if you can do this, like, you know, like, but if they don't have the motivation to achieve that themselves, then they won't. Then they won't, right? And I feel like that's a talk that every sports parent needs to have because sometimes these sports parents, yo, they be getting real, real crazy, okay? But know that you have to stay motivated, okay? Um, the last one, and we're ending on this one, um, is um, make sure that let me see, how can I, how can I, um, make sure that you are staying committed, um, and that you are moving forward and no matter what obstacles, right. Um, basically develop a level of perseverance. Okay. Um, these are, you know, skill sets that we learn as a kid, right. Um, skill sets that we learn in life to be able to, uh, persevere past any challenges no matter what obstacles we may have but sometimes we we just tend to give up too easily we just tend to allow those challenges and allow these setbacks to come and to make us want to quit and I'm not saying this for everybody but I see these comments sometimes left in the group I, I get the emails and the dms and the messages um, and I understand it's hard because if it was easy, literally everybody would be doing it, right? There is not the top 1% for a reason. There's not the top 10% for a reason because if, in, in, if it was easy and everybody can do it, then everybody would be doing it, but they're not because it's hard, right? We are literally called to something different. Not everybody is meant to be an entrepreneur. And, if, and it would be so lovely to think that but we're in the business of providing services and partnering with contractors. So essentially, if everybody was, then we wouldn't even have the people to partner with us to provide the services to help grow our business, right? Same like retail stores and restaurants and things like that, you know? And I feel like the, the thing that sets apart entrepreneurs um, from, a, I don't want to say, what's the word? A, a nine to fiver, right? Somebody that just desires is, is it's mindset. It's can they, will, are they willingly want to take on the challenges to chase after a dream that they know challenges are going to arise in? Like, am I willingly want to accept the challenges to reach the end goal? 
Do I have enough perseverance to be able to continue, like to keep fighting the fight, to keep moving forward no matter what, no matter what distraction, no matter what setbacks may come. You guys heard me like I'm, I'm trying to develop this software and my launch date just in one week got pushed back three times. I could have just been like, you know what, forget this. Like, I'm not gonna even do this no more. <laughs> like, what is the, what is it? Why? Why? Three times in one week I've had meetings and like, oh, we have the this came up and we need to do this. Or this a uh this uh what is it? AP API is not available. So we gotta, we gotta make this change. And I'm like, oh my goodness, right? But this was what I was willing to sign up for the moment I said, I'm going to develop my own software. Like I knew there was gonna be challenges, right? Can I persevere through them? So I, I hope this has been good. I'm going to copy and paste these six steps in the Facebook and in circle so you guys can see them, write them down, copy and paste, take a picture of them um, and then do the steps, okay? Um, just like the themes, I think it was number three, it said take action. So do the steps, take actions, write down your desires, set, create the plan, take action, stay motivated. I'm like reading them out of order, but you guys understand what I'm saying, right? I want to see you guys win. I want to see everybody win because I know you're able to do it. Um, it's Friday. Have an awesome, awesome day. Um, if you work throughout the weekend, then have an awesome weekend as well. If you're resting, like make sure you are listening to yourselves and doing what's best for yourselves. Um, but just stay focused, stay focused, stay motivated, keep pushing, welcome on the challenges. Um, and remember to stay productive and not busy. Don't confuse, don't confuse those two because it's easy to do so. Okay. Instagram, social media looks cute being busy. Okay, your bank account looks good being productive. That's how you can separate the two. Okay, you guys. So I love y'all. Have an awesome day. And um, I will see you guys Monday morning at 7 a.m. Bye, y'all.